good guys, why then do you and Hillary want to control and restrict and limit gun manufacturers, gun owners, and the responsible use of guns and ammunition to the rest of us, the good guys, instead of holding the bad guys accountable for their actions. And Mr. President, if I may, I'd like to use Chicago, your hometown, a city that has some of the strictest gun laws in the nation, a city that for decades and still is under democratic control, a city that has an outrageous and even embarrassing murder rate mm -hmm. as my first example. Why can't we round up these thugs, these drug dealers and gang members, and hold them accountable for their actions or allow the good people in Chicago access to firearms to protect themselves? Sure. Thank you. All right. Well, l let me – it's a multi-part question, so, so let me just uh, say a couple things. First of all, uh, the notion that – I, or Hillary, or Democrats, or whoever you want to choose, are hell-bent on taking away folks' guns is just not true. And, and I don't care how many times the NRA says it. I'm about to leave office. There have been more guns sold since I've been president than just about any time in U.S. history. There are there are enough guns for every man, woman, and child in this country. And at no point have I ever, per, ever proposed confiscating guns from responsible gun owners. So it's just not true. What I have said is precisely what you suggested, which is why don't we treat this like every other thing that we use? We used to have really bad auto fatality rates. The auto fatality rate has actually dropped precipitously, drastically, since I was a kid. Why is that? We decided we had seatbelt laws. We decided to have manufacturers put airbags on in place. We decided to crack down on drunk driving and texting. We decided to redesign roads so that they were less likely to have a car bank. We studied what is causing this, these fatalities using science and data and evidence, and then we slowly treated it like the public health problem it was, and it got reduced. We are not allowed to do any of that when it comes to guns because people, if you propose anything, it is suggested that we're trying to wipe away gun rights and, and impose tyranny in martial law. Do you know that Congress will not allow the Center for Disease Control to study gun violence? They're not allowed to study it because the notion is, is that by studying it the same way we do with traffic accidents, somehow that's going to lead to everybody's guns being confiscated. When we talked about background checks, if you buy a car, if you want to get a license, first of all, you got to get a license. You have to take a test. <laughs> you have to, people have to know that you know how to drive. You don't have to do any of that with respect to buying a gun. And when we talked about doing effective background checks, it was resisted because the notion was we were going to take your guns away. I... I just came from a meeting today in the Situation Room in which I've got people who we know have been on ISIL websites, living here in the United States, U.S. citizens, and we're allowed to put them on the no-fly list when it comes to airlines, but because of the National Rifle Association, I cannot prohibit those people from buying a gun. This is somebody who is a known ISIL sympathizer, and if he wants to walk in to a gun store or a gun show right now and buy as much, as many weapons as ammo as, as he can, nothing's prohibiting from doing that, even though the FBI knows who that person is. So, sir, I, I just have to say respectfully that 
There is a way for us to have common sense gun laws. There is a way for us to make sure that lawful, responsible gun owners like yourself are able to use it for sporting, hunting, protecting yourself. But the only way we're going to do that is if we don't have a situation in which anything that is proposed is viewed as some tyrannical destruction of the Second Amendment. And that's how the issue too often gets framed.